What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Echoes of Elm. For our fifth episode, we have my lifelong friend and bandmate, Justin Watkins, who's played in such bands as Mary Child, Outlet, Waterhead, Down to Zero, From Then On, and Burn the Negative. Justin was the front man for my first serious Elm band, Outlet, in the early 2000s. These days, he fronts our new band, Burn the Negative. Justin's musical history goes much further back than Outlet, though. Justin and his brother, Luke Watkins, had played together since grade school in their band, Mary Child. They had that natural, brotherly, musical bond, much like Daryl and Vinnie Abbott, or Edward and Alex Van Halen before them. Mary Child was a power trio, born in the midst of the 90s alternative scene. He's also known for having a really intense, in-your-face approach to his live performances, climbing the rafters of the Curtain Club or the Galaxy Club in Deep Ellum, or jumping off the side fill monitors at the cage. Never a dull moment performing with this guy, for sure. I knew whenever I started this podcast that I wanted him to be, like, within the first 10 episodes. And I'm really stoked to, you know, be able to dive into some musical history with him. So now that we got that out of the way, let's dive into it. What up, dude? Welcome. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to have you here, man. How you doing today? Good. It's it's just hot, you know. We're just outside all day. So it's brutal, but mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm in it all day too, out in the elements. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just what but, it is. Uh, yeah, dude, we're here to you know, you know what we're here for. We're here to talk about Ellen. Here to talk about that whole scene and you know, just you know, we just go back and document as much of it as we can and try to recall some cool stories along the way. Maybe remember some of the clubs, you know. There's been some clubs yep. brought up that some of the other guests have mentioned that I totally forgot about, you know, completely. So, like the Orbit yes. Room. Um, I hadn't yeah. heard the Orbit Room, that name, in years, you know. Uh, I, I forget all about it. Yeah, the last guest, uh, Jonathan from Reverend Horton, he, he brought that up. But I wanted to start out and ask you, like, if maybe if you had a, an early memory of Ellen or, like, when you first got there, one of your very first memories, something inspiring that happened to you. Yeah. Yeah, I have a pretty cool uh, first Elm story that I remember as far as my first Elm story. Um, Aaron and I had already moved down and we moved to Dallas just for me to pursue my music. I mean, that was the only reason we made the move from Colorado. So we went out. We'd never been to any real shows before. For, you know, it was just there's what they didn't exist up there. So uh, King's X was playing at Trees. And uh, I'd loved King's X forever. So it's like, okay, you know, let's go see what this is all about. And, um, you know, it was just packed house. Galactic Cowboys opened up. And I remember we got up on the balcony, you know, and we were just in awe, just like trying to take it all in, just the whole everything. And uh, Galactic Cowboys played, you know, just loud in your face. And we're just like, yep, you know, this is what I want to do. And so... I went downstairs to grab some drinks in between Galactic Cowboys and King's X, and uh, I was walking to the bar, and there's Dimebag, like a couple, oh. you know, like four or five people just around him, just shooting the shit, yeah. and I was like, wow, like this, you know, this is pinch me, you know, this is real. So I just kind of joined in and just kind of listened to his stories and, and talked for, you know, just, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and then King's X hit their first chord. And he yeah. threw the bartender a 20 and, he, and the bartender handed him a beer and, and the bartender looked, he's like, rock stars. You know, and I was just like, oh, like that was it. I'm, no. I'm ready. So since then, I've, yeah, it's been um, chasing the stage. King's X, man. Yeah. My buddy Mike out here, he works at Munt Music. He's their guitar tech. He's tied yeah. to his uh, guitar tech. That's actually how I came across the uh, the orange amp that, that I use in Burnt the Negative. You know, yeah. the whole reason I use that is because of Tides of War. I saw his rig, and he has two of them I have. You know, two of those 4x10 wow. cabs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that little uh, stomp box that I used, the foot switch, that was yep. his, That was Tides of War. Oh, cool. <laughs> actually used to be on his pedal board. So, yeah. Uh, so cool, yeah. In there. Yeah. Mm. So, um Maybe start with uh, Mary Child. Talk about Mary Child, like, you know, the beginning. Like, maybe or even before that, like, you know, when you 
your brother maybe first came across instruments did you even start on guitar first did you maybe start on yeah drums? so that goes back to i guess seventh eighth grade it was one of the two and i guess my brother was either second or third grade he was five years younger and um uh my granddad sent me a guitar a pv guitar with the amp and luke a set of pearl drums and mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm playing guitar and Luke's a drummer and it, it fit our personality. So, right. um, you know, Luke couldn't even, he'd sit on the stool, but he couldn't reach the pedals or anything, you know? So we just started just making noise. And uh, I think I took six months of lessons, you know, from a, from a guy local there in, in, <clears throat> in the mountains. And uh, in my first gig, it was that year, it was within my range of my um, lessons. I got up on stage in this bar, it's called the True Grit in Colorado, Ridgeway, Colorado. And uh, I played Johnny Be Good. You know, that was my first stage experience. Nice. And, uh, nice. you know, everyone was drunk and they loved it, you know, and I was a little kid just jamming, you know, so they were like, this is awesome. <laughs> so that was my first first touch of, of stage. Um, and then Luke and I would play talent shows and, and then we got to where uh, we, we went through a couple of bass players. That was kind of our, our curse for a long time. Um, but uh, we, we up there, there wasn't any local places to play. So we would rent out community centers, you know, for three to 500 bucks. And we would just do the whole night. It would just be our show. So we'd play three hours and a DJ in between sets and, you know, we'd sell our merch and we'd make the thousand dollars, 1200 a night, you know, cause just there's wow. nothing else for people to do. You know, they just come out because, oh, you know, Mary Child's playing. So, you know, and then what year was that? What year would this have been? And that was probably 90s. I was out of, I was already graduated. So I graduated 92. So probably 94 ish. Okay. Right before we moved down here. So then we were, we were doing that. We were doing very well we were making money i think probably the most money i've ever made to this day playing music <laughs> really it went backwards yeah, that, that's good gig money what you mentioned there yeah so for 1994 dollars it mean, was great great yeah yeah we just had to cover our you know what it cost to get the community center which you know that was never a problem so and then we kind of traveled around colorado a little bit and kind of did the same thing we'd play these little this cool little bed and breakfast places these people would reach out and it'd just be real eclectic just yeah. strange places really cool you know but but mm -hmm. not your normal quote unquote you know three four bands just rocking out it wasn't none of that right so uh the night we were moving down here we'd already come down i think luke and aaron were already down here and uh i had to stay up for a job and the bass player was going to come down with me I had all this stuff in the band van and just loaded down went to pick him up to drive down here to move, to start playing, you know, actually pursuing this. And he said he couldn't go. Just had a, had a chick and he was in love. And so I told him, well, you know, you'll be sitting in this town and you'll see Luke and I on stage and, you know, it'll be your biggest regret in life. And so then later I said, I'm not pulling your shit out of the van either. So mm. you can come get it in Texas. So I probably still have some of his stuff somewhere. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know how I keep stuff. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, you still had Grace guitar, you know, untied. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But yeah. Wow. So, that was kind of, so we got down here, we got down here and we had, you know, we were a working band for three years, the three of us, and we were ready to, we had hours and hours of music. And then we get down and we had nothing. I didn't know anybody. Luke was still in high school. Right. And we're just like, start over you know yeah and yeah just start trying to meet people and yeah so and then uh right around that time somewhere in there i would say maybe 95 96 i met you at, at tia's in the yes yeah <laughs> and I, I saw your van and i saw yeah. your hair and i just <laughs> knew i was like he's got to be a band guy he's got to be <laughs> yeah i didn't know if you were a singer or a drummer or what but i just figured you know yeah and that assumption was correct. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it didn't happen right away, but um, I remember when I did finally come out, me, you, and Luke really gelled as a three piece. We really did. Yeah. I think it clicked yeah. pretty good. Um, go ahead. Yeah. And what was cool was 
you mm-hmm. know, Luke and I, I mean, we could literally, we knew where each other were going. I mean, we played together since, you know, we were young kids and he was just little. He, and so we just knew we, it was, I, I've never had that connection, you know, and I probably never will just because it was a brother connection. And it was, and that makes it was it just amazing. For the other guy coming in, the bass player, it makes it easy because you guys are so locked in. Yeah, we were just, yeah. It, it was easy to just jump right into it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that it was, was fun. That was, it was great music. And for those that don't know, that are listening to Mary Child. I mean, what would you classify Mary Child as? I, mean, I would say it was definitely part of the grunge sound. It definitely yeah, kind of went in there and even just, you know, regular rock. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure. Not regular. Regular is not the right word. Right. Uh, I know. It's so hard to categorize anything. Yeah, it's hard to. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely in that era of like Nirvana, Pearl Jam. Yeah. Know, you know, Silver Cherish. I mean, we had that three piece, yeah. you know, grunge feel. Power real thing. loose, real <clears throat> simple. You know, I, I believe in just simple simplicity and and just kind of more in your face type stuff. Um, the last guest, Jonathan, he kept mentioning uh, Greenville and Radish. And, yeah. you know, a little connection there. You know, the Radish guys. Yeah. Three pieces as well, weren't they? Weren't yeah, they all- yeah. So Brian lived in, the bass player for Radish, uh, lived in Rockwell, and Luke met him, and they started talking, and then he'd come out to, you know, jam with us. And then, um, you know, I remember it was so cool because, you know, they were on the radio, and then, you know, here, you know, Brian's in our living room just hanging out and, and it was just it was surreal for us. And yeah. one night he's like, he's like, man, this weekend I, we're playing Letterman. And we were like, what? Yeah, we got to go play Letterman. And so we're, we're like, well, you got to wear a Mary Child shirt or something. Well, he put a sticker on the back of his base, a Mary Child sticker, and, and he flipped it, you know, live. And we were just like, you know, we made it. Like, <laughs> so, so cool. I need to go yeah. in that episode and look it up. So yeah, can, that would be cool. You had to find like, it. The sticker. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, I guess probably Little Pink Stars, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably was, so. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. So, and that was a, that was a cool run, you know, because uh, Ben and John would come out and they, you know, Ben's like, you know, he was so young then. He's like, can I yeah. play your guitar? I'm like, yep, <laughs> you know, here you go. <laughs> so it was fun. Yeah. And then uh, Brian left the band, and so he started jamming with me and Luke for a while. And uh, and we got to about, we wrote 10 new songs, and, and we were going to do, it wasn't Mary Child, and I can't remember the name of it. We probably had a name. But um, Damn, y'all had 10 songs? Yeah, yeah, we were ready to play live. Okay. And wow. Brian, like, he's like, I'm kind of done with the music business. Uh, he just got burnt out. Really? So, which one we were was just like, and around. there we went again, you know, they're bass players. We were looking at, we were like, what? Wow. What? Was, Brian was the bassist, right? The Radish? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So he was older. He was more of a higher gun for Radish anyways, uh, <laughs> you know, because he was older than, than John and Ben, but. I feel so bad to have added to the bass player curse. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the bass player curse. Dang you were the bass player curse. You were part of that loop. In fact. I came back and uh, revert the negative, man. That's the redemption, right? <laughs> there we go. We all back Circle around. Not, not yeah. as the bass player. <laughs> yeah. Not as the bass player. We'll get, we'll, we'll get to burn the negative. But yeah, somewhere yeah. in there, whenever that kind of dissolved with the, the Radish guy, was there anything in between Mary Child and Outlet? Did there, was there anything else in that kind of interim there? And then, well, Waterhead. Okay, that's right. You already had yeah. Waterhead whenever we started. Yeah, so, Waterhead was already going. But yeah, I, and, and I'd always I'd always started, you know, it was always my own project. It was always my own stuff. I never did any covers, maybe one or two covers, but it was always just me writing. Yeah. And so I had a friend at Tia's that his brother-in-law was a drummer, I think. I think that's how the connection was. And uh, they were looking for a guitar player, and they were already a working band. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know if I want to do that. You know, I, I don't do that. You know, I can't like, I was just like, I can't do that. So I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything else. And I talked to Luke. I'm like, man, you know, you know, I didn't want to hurt him, you know, but he was busy doing his, you know, building his business. And he's like, dude, go for it. You know, cause I, I sure. still, I was wanting to play. So yeah, I went out and tried out and you know, the first night they're like, yep you know, you got the gig. So, and it was cool because it was such a, a new journey for me, just guitar, no vocals, a little backup once, you know, we got rolling. But, you know, first I had to learn 
their songs, but then we started writing and, uh, and that was just a fun, and, just um, a fun. Waterhead, for those listening, Waterhead was, uh, this is the next band, Waterhead. They were kind of, I'd say, Rage Against the Machine uh, yes. in that vein. The first yeah. Rage record. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. brutal, just bass and drum oriented. And yeah. Yeah, just, it definitely was just. The rap. There's definitely yeah, rap. Yeah, Chris, we kind of rap. Yeah. Yeah, a little Gosh, bit of hip hop fused in there. And uh, what a drummer. Uh, Mark? Yeah. Yeah, Mark. Mark Buscarriage. Yeah. I mean, he's such a show drummer. I mean, he's just back there just throwing Man. sticks and. <laughs> yeah so great him at the curtain club i love watching him at curtain because the way james would make him sound oh the sound yeah it. i mean you're like you guys always yeah. sound incredible at curtain dude like oh, i know guys, he just yeah james made it, you know like perfect yeah yes he knew exactly what to do with y'all yeah and, uh, james and y'all did that was that first uh okay y'all did one record right waterhead was it just one album or yeah we did like an ep record? and then we did a full album yeah Okay, an EP and then a full length. Yeah. Okay. And then they had one before I joined too. Okay. But it was kind of a different genre. It was more kind of coming coming out of the '80s style rock. It was that first Waterhead? Right. But I, I wasn't a part of it. Yeah. So you guys were like full on in the '90s by the time you were in the band. Yeah. But yes. The, the '80s had been kind of swept out of there completely. Right. They were gone. Yeah. yeah. And they, you know, because they had been playing for a while through the basement. They had a a good phone. I can't remember their band before Waterhead, but it was more of a hair metal type band. Right. You know, that they came up through. Yeah. So, man, there was such a drastic change from the late eighties and like around the time, like Nevermind came out and not just Nevermind, but like Helmet, Meantime, yeah. uh, the Melvins, you know, there was all the uh, Soundgarden, you know, all this stuff, you know, and everybody was down tuning further and then Waterhead. Yeah, Alice in Chains, yeah. yeah. Waterhead, you were definitely influenced by that because I noticed that immediately when I saw Waterhead live. <laughs> was how low your guitar was, you know, and you were only yeah. playing with six string SG. It's not like you had yeah. some crazy eight string guitar or something. It was just a six string. <laughs> but what six string and A, right? Tune down to drop a B, wasn't it, or C? B. Yeah, I think it was B. So it yeah. sounded like a seven string, but it was only a six. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I put really the heavy, though. fattest bass string I could fit through there, you know, they would fit through the hole and just yeah. like, <laughs> Is that what the yeah. top string was, an actual bass string? Yeah. In Waterhead? Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. just something unique there. Yeah, you did. It was yeah. a really cool sound. It was fun. Any, and is, then, Water, is Waterhead on you? James, too? between James and um, Scott from Slow Row, they helped me really fine-tune my sound ah. with, with what I was trying to get. And I, I finally got where I wanted it. It yeah. took a while because, you know, you, you know how it is. You get so frustrated. You know what you want to sound like, but to yeah. get there – you try so many things and, and they really helped me tweak, you know, so that was cool. You grab a classic amp, like a Marshall or an orange and you think like, this is what I want, but then yeah. you get home and the character of the amp isn't necessarily what you lo were looking for. Right. So that cycle it's a start. Through. Yeah. That's why I go through so many guitars until I finally land on one that I really like, you mm -hmm. know, it takes me a little bit to kind of cycle through until I, you know, you know, when you pick one up and you're like, yep, this is it. Yep. Yeah, you know, it feels right. Or the amp, you know, you know, when that sound is just right. That's cool. I didn't know that uh, the guy, th those guys helped you out with your rig, though. I didn't know yes. they helped you dial it in. That's awesome. Yep, helped a Bra lot. Braxton so. did that with me. He actually was kind cool. of yeah. me in what not to do on stage. You know, as far as, you, know, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you got to turn it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was also the one that kind of was talking to me about, I remember him talking to me about aiming the cabs away from, like, so they're not facing the audience right there, you know, front yeah. line. You can still mic them up and have them loud, but they don't have to blast everybody right there. In the, you know, he yeah. was kind of, and then also he was the one that showed me that a cab on wheels sounds different than, you know, the cab just sitting flat yeah, on the floor. Sitting, yeah. Yeah. He was the one that kind of showed me all those little tricks and everything, you know? It, yeah. I love Braxton, yeah. man. He's great. He oh, was always yeah, awesome. Dude. Yeah. It was like James at curtain and then Braxton over at galaxy. Oh, I know. I mean, we had, yeah. we just had such a, we so were so, um, I don't know, I guess you spoiled really could what? be the word because yeah. they made us yeah. sound way, I mean, just amazing. They made us sound like we were a different level. Consistent. And yeah. Yeah. They really helped that Dallas scene. I mean, they are, yeah. They yeah, really, um, a lot yeah. of that scene owes them. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Um, so after that, okay. So Waterhead does an EP and then they'll do that full length somewhere around there. We, me and Eric approach you. Uh, yet again, up at Tia's. We start coming up to Tia's. Yeah. You know, 
You're like, you know, and, and at first I remember it wasn't a yes right away. It was, it took a little while. Yeah, it did. I didn't even, Yeah. you know, you guys would come up and, you know, we would talk and, and, uh, you know, y'all were so young and, and I was already in a working band. I'm like, you know, right. that's cool. But, but I wasn't singing, you know, I wasn't doing that side that I love so much. Yeah. So I remember the first um, practice, you know, you guys finally got me out there and y'all were already rehearsed. Like you had, you know, y'all been playing for years together. Oh. So you guys had, you guys had all kinds of stuff. And so, and I had all kinds of writings, you know, that I've been writing that I hadn't done anything with. So, right. I mean, that first practice, I mean, it was like we wrote like two or three songs. You were the first person that we had brought in because we had such a struggle the first like four or five years of us playing together, me, Eric, and Kyle. Kyle on yeah. drums, Eric on bass, and me on guitar. Greg didn't come in until a bit later, you know, until the outlet era. But before that, we were esoteric, and we never were able to find anybody until you. You were the first one that really clicked. Yeah. And also, you were like, what it takes, that song, what it takes. Yes. That was usually, that was usually like the test. We would bring people in and play that song. You know, that was the one we would play for them and see if they could do something with it. You were the first one that had an idea that worked. And, you know, we were all like, yeah, that's really cool. The aggression, oppression, and the way yeah. you put your phrasing on that and everything. Yeah. Really cool. And, uh, I mean, that, so, you know, you immediately clicked in with us. There was something there for sure. Yeah. I still remember and, that first jam. Oh, so it was epic. Yeah, I think we're all just, it was one of those highs that were like, okay, we have something here, you know. Yeah. Um, did you feel like was so cool. walking away? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't interrupt you. Um, did you feel that walking away that first day that there was something there? That yeah. very good practice you did? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And what was cool was, you know, with my connection already down in Deep Ellum through Waterhead, yeah. we didn't have to go through those channels. Right. If you remember, like, we just like, okay, here's a Thursday or Friday night, like, get it. <laughs> like yeah i remember feeling like we blew right through those doors real quick yeah right yeah it's like oh it's justin's you know new project like cool let's do it and like, you mm -hmm. know you guys were just you know stamps on your hand and <laughs> yeah the x's yeah there's a lot of the yeah. pictures i've got x's on my hand because i'm still getting drank but yeah yeah we would come and open for waterhead so you do double duty and you yeah would, gosh as the front man of outlet and then you would play and close the show as guitarist yeah and our oh, those were long nights. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the, there was one night where I joined you with Waterhead, and we both <laughs> did double duty. And I played bass, and I filled in on bass and Waterhead. Oh, awesome. I had, like, hours to learn some of the songs. It was like Crash Court. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that, that was a fun night. But with Outlet, yeah, we kind of, uh, what did we do first? Oh, the What It Takes demo. We did those first yes. three songs, Indian Giver, What It Takes, and uh, At The Sun. At The Sun, yeah. Yeah, those three. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Strong. They're still strong. They are. They are. They really do. Yeah. A couple of people have commented on them and they're kind of timeless. Yeah. The timeless mm -hmm. ball. Yeah. So I think so. I think they hold up pretty well. But uh, yeah. Yeah. With Outlet, um, I'd say uh, a curtain. You know, I never I never got to hear what we sounded like, though. You know what I mean? It, it, <laughs> you don't get to hear it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But you really created a character, though. And I said that earlier when we were talking in text. Um, you know, the, which, by the way, all the outlet guys, for those, everybody listening, all the outlet guys still have a chat that runs to this day, a group chat that we, we all talk. You know, we all still collectively talk. But I, I brought it up that, Justin, really, you really did create a unique kind of character in outlet. And uh, your themes, too, your lyrical themes were really interesting. Life lies. And uh, yeah. a lot of really good stuff, man. I mean... It it really, it was, it was a real strange time for me, you know, through my, in my life, but you know, that writing with the outlet days, it was real dark, but it was a positive negative. You know, every, every song had a positive negative, you know, I'd kill myself to set the world free, you know, that type of like, what, you know, that type of like, what was he talking yeah. about? And, and literally when I would write, uh, it would be a, either eat the bullet or pen and paper, like. There, there was no in between. Like I, I'm either going to die tonight or I'm going to get this out. And, wow. and, it, and, and so, but that wasn't very healthy. Right. Uh, right. It was cause I was able to get it out. I never, you know, ate the bullet, but, but 
you know, if we go forward after outlet, I didn't do anything. And I was kind of, I was, honestly, I was scared that I couldn't write unless I was in that place. Right. And I didn't want to be in that place. So I'm like, I guess I can't write anymore. <laughs> so it was really place back then. I really never knew that you were in such a dark place. I should have, I should have picked up on it, but I was in a dark place myself. Yeah, we, we were all dealing with our own demons for sure. Yeah. You know, we were yeah. yeah, in our own ways. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I definitely, yeah. I, I was dealing with addiction strong at that point already, you know, yeah. and I wasn't a drinker, but I did, I did have my issues as well. And, but yeah, I mean, you were right though about the positive negative though. You did, you always found a way to shine a light on it to where it wasn't, it wasn't such a downer. You yeah, know? right. For sure. Yeah. It wasn't all that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, with, well, with the stage antics, I always, you know, I loved going to live shows and I, and I liked watching shows, but you know, sometimes you want more. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, I don't want a guitar player just to stand up there or, you know, I just want, I want more of a show. And so in my head, I'm like, how can I make a show? How can I get in people's face? How can I get them off the fence? You know, you're going to love me or hate me, right? but right. you're going to be talking about it. And so that's when I started the rope, you know, so we start playing at places and I'd always look at the rafters and, you know, we'd bring a ladder and, you know, hopefully it would hold. And, you know, so I'd start the rope and swinging around and, you know, that's kind of how it started. I'm sure you made many a club owner nervous. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're gonna like, hey, can't do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> But your antics were great, though. You had such a, a, a way about it. Even like on that one with like the cage, there's that cage show where yeah. uh, you grab that one little lamp and kind of like shine it in your face while you're singing and look at it and then throw it back the other way. And yeah. just little things you would do. And then you climb up on those side fill monitors, you know, and on that one, that one bit of footage, sometimes you disappear. And I wouldn't know where you went, you know, and I'd just be playing the <laughs> You know that one part you're looking at me like, "Come on, get out of the way!" And I didn't see you. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, "Oh, there he is. He's up there." Like, Watch out. <laughs> you get out of the way, then you jump back down. You know, and we'd bring yeah. it all back in together. But yeah, and then you brought a net in at some point too, right? Where you would climb the big net like up yep. to the, top of the curtain club, right? Yep, yep. Wow. Yeah, I'd put it in the front. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. People started to like come into the shows to expect that. You know, like you got to right. see this guy. Right. You know, yeah. It, even the, the mini trampoline, you know, I mean, it was just yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, the mini I love that picture. You flying way up in the air. Oh, that's, that's one of the best pictures ever. It really you know, it looks, I'm, and I'm six feet off the ground and it's like, how, what's he doing? <laughs> and my dream, you know, I had hair. <laughs> you, you, you had got so much hair in that photo. That's a great photo. Uh, um, so we released, uh, the three song and then we did our full length self evaluation. Um, and then, okay, so I guess after Outlet was, was it Pusher? Was that what came out immediately after Outlet? Yeah, so basically Outlet, you know, we were all just kind of, you know, people were going their own ways and, and we yeah. had a little meeting. We're like, if we stop this project today, who's going to be playing tomorrow? And Eric and I, like, we will, and, you know, no one else. So we're like, all right, Outlet's done. So literally the next day, Eric and I started Pusher with uh, Mark from Waterhead. So back to a three-piece. We'd all, you know, I'd played with Eric forever, and Mark had played with me forever, so we clicked pretty fast. It didn't last very long. We got some shirts made and played maybe three or four shows, um, and Eric was going through some stuff, and we just kind of, you know, split. So what did, what did Pusher sound like? What was the, you know, was there any recordings of it? Did they yeah, ever get the put down? No, we never got to record. I don't even know if I have any live stuff. And I mean, maybe somewhere. Seeing mashup though, like Eric on bass, oh, you on yeah. guitar and vocals, and Mark on drums. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. It was fun. I mean, I can't even remember. I can't even remember a song we had, but it was. I remember it was just it was fun. You know, Eric is just such yeah. an amazing bass player. He is. And then, you know, Mark on drums. It, it was just it was a good mix for sure. Yeah. Those two together specifically, oh. they would make a hell of a rhythm section. Yeah. 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 Because they're just, they're both so in the pocket. Just, yes. Yeah. And then yeah. do their fills like good, steady, constant. Yeah. It was good. 
Uh, yeah, I remember hearing about y'all, and I remember hearing good things. I remember there being a little bit of talk about Pusher, yeah. Um, so, okay. But that never got recorded, though, huh? There's no document. Nothing, no. Man. It seems that. like we did a seems like we did like a live uh, Liquid Lounge recording, you know, maybe. Really? Find it, it seems like we did. Man, try to find that if you can. I'd love to hear it. I'm really oh, curious. Oh, I would too. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll ask Mark, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Did uh, speaking of Liquid Lounge, I know recently a an acoustic Samsara show resurfaced, and I was trying to think back. Did an outlet ever do an acoustic show? Did we ever do a stripped down acoustic <laughs> set? I don't think we did, but I can't remember. I don't, I don't think so. That would have been good. Well, right. I mean, I don't know. We could have stripped some of those songs down and made them. You know, yeah. I mean, we had Why Now, which was great. And yeah. OP. So we definitely could have put together an acoustic set, but I don't think we ever did. I don't think we did. Outlet unplugged. That would have been interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> been good. Um, what happened uh, after Pusher? What, what yeah, happened so Pusher, after? that's when I took a break. Okay. And I don't know, I don't know time, I'm, years, it was a while. But I had, I, I had the bug, you know, I, I wasn't done. I don't think I'll ever be done. Um, I enjoy the stage, I enjoy writing. For the most part um so but but i was i was scared so i'd go down to deep ellum a little bit you know go see some bands or whatever uh yeah. and i just ask around hey does anyone know anybody looking for a singer anybody know what's going on band wise and so chris from uh three quarter ton remember them yes they were, yeah yeah so he was a drummer well he had started a project uh with a couple new guys and um so they were looking for a singer. So I'm like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's, let me go try out. So, uh, luckily they were just at the beginning stages. So there's no name, there was no, you know, real, not even any songs together. So just kind of coming out and, and that's kind of where I wanted to join anyways, you know, I'd rather join at that stage than a working band. Right. So, yeah. uh, yeah. So it clicked really just right off the first practice. They're like, yeah, you know, if you want it, you, you know, we like what you do. So I'm like, cool, I think this can work. You know, and I talked to Aaron, I'm like, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm, I can write, you know, that's what I was worried about. I Can I write in from a good place? Cause I don't want to go down the dark road. It's not worth it. <clears throat> so uh, she's like, yeah, you can figure it out. So I'm like, you know, she's always been super supportive. I'm like, all right. Oh, totally. <laughs> so, so this, yeah. Was three quarter ton? Is this, was that the band you were trying out for three quarter ton? No, it was just the drummer Chris was from Three Quarter Ton. They'd already defunct, okay. and so it was his new project. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah untitled, like it didn't have a new yeah, band. right. Uh, yeah, okay. new band. Uh, yeah. Norwood was the bass player, and then Brandon Sonier, and oh, then uh, okay. yeah, yeah, he was the bass player. That's how I met Norwood. Story. This is Michael's entry point into the yes, story. Yes, yes, yep. So that's how he kind of got to the scene, <laughs> and um, so you know, pretty quickly we had we had a set going and well, you know, we we're always a name. It's always like naming a band is, but we kind of kept going, kept going and we came up with down to zero. So it, it, okay. It fit, you know, I, I always like names with meaning, you know, and, and to yeah. me down to zero, everyone in life is down to zero at some point, you know, or, you know, their relationship is down to zero, but their bank's good or their bank's down to zero or, you know, just something is down to zero and you're always, you know, you're, you're at the bottom. So it, it fit, we all loved it. So that's what we took off with it. And that was, and, and so the writing process, I, I remember the first song I wrote for down to zero, uh, Chloe had, I think it was her, oof. I don't know, I want to say sixth or seventh birthday, maybe eighth. I mean, it was a long time ago. And uh, I remember there was just a bunch of girls, you know, little eight, eight-year-old girls laying around slumber party and I'd get up <laughs> early, you know, and I, I put my headphones on and I, you know, we had the recording and I, it was time to get some lyrics to it. And I just started writing uh, the greatest day of my life, you know, and that, and it was just a real positive song, you know, it's the greatest day of my life. And it's, and I look around, I was like, okay, I can do this. I can, I can write from a good spot, 
you know, I don't have to go down the dark hole. So, That's so awesome. from there on, I mean, it was, I'm like, Oh, I had to prove to myself. I can do this and not yeah. go down, you know, not. Yeah. So it was, I was like, all right, I'm in. And we, we did really well in my opinion. I mean, we, we opened 12 stones. Uh, that was a fun band, a uh, yeah. fun night. Became really good friends with full devil jacket, which yeah. I mean, I've always loved those, you know, and then you get a chance to open for someone like that and then be friends with them. And you're just like this, you know, it's, it's kind of what music's about, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Being around the people that inspired you. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. or yeah. Um, so I didn't realize there was a drummer before uh, Jacob and down to yeah. zero. <clears throat> so Chris yeah. was the first drummer. From down yeah, to he zero. was the first drummer. And then, okay. um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I think he was just kind of, I think he got kind of burned out of just going, you know, and playing shows to nobody. Some, you know, that's how you start out, you know, and I, I think yeah. he just kind of got burnt of it and just all the time you put in to go out and no one show up, I think got old to him. So, yeah, um, I know yeah, that we found, yeah, I mean, everybody's gone through it. <laughs> and so, uh, I've gone, I've gone through it recently. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I played I played an Isle of the Lyle show not too long ago in Richardson, where it was literally just the club owners and my wife. You know, maybe like yeah. one other band. You know, right? So like I, that. I understand. I understand the struggle completly. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you go out and set all your stuff up, and you're like, yeah. tear it down. But if you keep going, you will get on some good bills. You just got to stick yeah. it out and keep going. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, you gotta you gotta want it. I don't know. Yeah. So. It, it, yeah. 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 And that's how we found uh, Jacob was uh, Brandon's neighbor and he'd never been in a project. So this, and we were already, you know, gigging pretty decently. So he was just thrown into it, you know, and, you know, he did real well. I mean, he's, he hasn't looked back. So. And this is yeah. Jacob Prey. We're talking about everybody. Yes. Drummer for uh, our current band, Burn the Negative. Yes. Yeah. So essentially, yep. the, the rhythm section for uh, Down to Zero eventually became the rhythm section for Burn the Negative. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Drummer and player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Down to Zero. Did you guys, uh, I know you guys gigged a lot and everything, but I, and I've probably asked you this before, but did you guys ever go record any demos or anything? Man, uh, we, did, we did a recording. Um, the student recorded it and uh, for, you know, one of his grades. And it was kind of more of a demo, and yeah. I can't remember how many songs we did. Maybe I don't know, five, six. But it, you know, it was demo. You know, and that's the the frustrating part. You know, when you do a project and you have such good music, but you never get it down, right? You know, to where you feel like listen to the, you know, put it in people's faces. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's it's and I you know it's it's a regret you know, and it's usually a money and time thing you know. Yeah. Like, you either oh, don't have the money or the time. I've often w wondered what you guys sounded like because I never got to see you live. I never got to see you down to zero. I definitely remember the images of that giant mohawk. Like you had that really big yeah. mohawk going on. Yeah, that thing was awesome. rad. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. I, I had it up for Shark Week, you know, playing Curtain Club, and you know, I had to duck to go through the the door and stuff. It was pretty cool. That's Aaron would funny. have to drive me to the show, and I'd have to lay down in the car because I couldn't fit in the car. <laughs> no shit! Wow, yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> couldn't fit in the car. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta do like this. yeah. When you try yeah. to go in that yeah. way. Yeah, I've, so I've always felt like. You know, playing shows, I, you know, I don't want to look like a plumber on stage. I want to be like, what does this guy do? Like, how does, how does he function in daily life? You know, that's what I want people to think. Like, you know, make it just like some other persona that, that doesn't exist except on stage. You know, that's yes. kind of what be viewed as, you know, for people to go like, I don't understand what he can do in daily uh, life. You, like, you do. <laughs> You definitely succeeded in that, and also an outlet. I know that there was, there was times where it was a little scary being on stage <laughs> right next to you. You know what I mean? It really, sometimes I didn't know what the hell was going to happen. You know, I was going to snap the head off my guitar. You know, it was like, 
Am I going to get, is he going to bash into me? I mean, am I going to get kicked in the face? Am I going to get whipped with a chain? You know, you were like Ghost Rider with those chains, you know, whipping them chains around and stuff. I remember like oh, the people gosh. at Rose, like the people yeah. that came shows regularly, they knew to kind of, you know, get their hand back. I'd you be know. kicking people, swinging yeah. out, my rope. Swing <laughs> out and swing back in. Yeah, you would swing way out there and then come back yeah. in. So much energy, though. Yeah. Uh. I remember one waterhead show, you know, I was stretching my ears out and I had big padlocks in them yeah. and I had the key up on the, on my amp, you know, and they were pretty heavy. And I remember the first song, you know, and we played real low and I, I, just, I put my head down boom, and they slapped me in my head and I got up and I was kind of dizzy because those locks like literally hit my head, my temples. Oh. It felt like it almost knocked me out. I got up on stage and I'm trying to get the key and I lock my ears. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I learned like from a, that one. Well, I bet you look like a complete nut, and it probably worked. It. It worked <laughs> yeah. Look at this <laughs> moron. <laughs> this like probably part of the show, you know. He's like, look at this guy. He's putting keys in his ears, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a fun experience. Yeah. Um, so, down, okay, down to zero. Do you remember what, like, on a timeline, did that band run from, like, when did it start? It was probably, like, 2012 or 2013, right? When y'all started, Probably so somewhere around there, yeah, like, gosh, you know Norwood would know better than me, but yeah. yeah. When did it run till like 2017 or something? 2018, yeah, probably so. Yeah, somewhere we did a good there. run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so at a certain point, you guys just decided, you know, that was that was that on close that chapter. Yeah, we had some guitar issues, and you know, people just. It just kind of fizzles out, you know. So people, people go different directions. Yeah, it always yeah. happens. Yeah, not always yeah. But it happens. Yeah, right. It happens, and and so, yeah, we just um, took a break, and then obviously, you know, you hit me up, and yeah, and uh, we joined forces again. I had been thinking about hitting you up for a while, and I finally got up the courage to do so. I'm so I'm really glad I did. Yeah, and, and I guess the, we'll we'll start go ahead and start there, like. We got together and, and started, and then we got, came up with the name pretty quickly too. Uh, yeah. Burn Negative, which is uh, me and you. Obviously, I'm on I'm lead guitar, your vocals, and you're going to do some guitar as well. Yeah. And uh, Michael Norwood and Jacob Prey from uh, Down to Zero, the previous band, they're with us now. Uh, what's up, Jacob? What's up, Mike? I know you guys are going to be listening. What's up, dude? <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mr. Alaska, man. Yeah, yeah, he's up in the mountains somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, hiding in the snow. Um, mm -hmm. But talk about like another one that really came together quick. That first practice was, didn't we walk away with two songs? Like, that I think practice? so. It was good, you know. And that's what's so nice about having the rhythm section already, you know, pretty much synced up. Yes. Yeah. You know, and then you adding a new flair that, you know, we haven't been involved with. And then, you know, me having stuff built up like, okay, it's time to get this stuff out. Like, yeah. It comes together quick and then just fine tuning. So I'm I'm super excited to to get some recordings and, and start playing live for sure. How do you feel about your writing now? I know the I've heard you mention over the course of this interview that you sound almost a little bit, you know, uh nervous about writing, you know. Which I understand completely, you know, especially when it comes to lyric writing. Yeah. Yeah. I that was definitely before down to zero. I didn't know if I could. So down to zero helped me transition to more of a, a kind of where I'm at now. I don't have to be so, I don't have to be, I don't have to self-sabotage myself to feel like I get good lyrics out of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can still be happy and, you know, fulfilled yeah. as a human and still have some decent, you know, quality words, I feel. So, yeah. you know, and it's still a strong meaning, but, you know, no, no bullet to the head type stuff, you know, so. <laughs> a better way to all right with that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i've been there i survived it so <laughs> i'm good um, <clears throat> go ahead yeah yeah and, yeah i don't know so that that burned the negative i mean it's i'm super excited to you know see where yeah. this project goes and yeah we, we don't have a whole lot to i guess uh talk about with burn the negative because we're still kind of at the beginning we're on what song seven i think at this point yeah, yeah. we just wrote song seven um so we're getting close, I think, to having uh, an album's worth of material. Um, 
so I guess the real question is, I'll even bring it up on here, it's fine, is I don't know if we're going to be able to get Braxton to do it or not. Uh, <laughs> Come on, yeah. Braxton. <laughs> we're calling you out. <laughs> If you listen to this, we love you, bro. Uh, yeah, come on. directly to him. <laughs> yeah, because it feels like you know that he was just the natural hit for me in my head. Whenever I thought about it, I was like, "Well, who else?" You know. I know. Yeah, to me, there yeah. is no one else. I mean, he did such a yeah. great job with us on Outlet, and you know, he's such a great guy. I mean, a friend for years and years and years and years and years. So, I've yeah. worked with him uh, on three more records after Outlet. That's you know, awesome. And every time it's been amazing. It's always yeah. like it's always a fun process, and I like get excited before I'm like when I'm like on the way to his house studio. I like got really like butterflies and excited because it was yeah. like that much fun, you know, going there to record. Which, by the way, we should mention uh, you built that studio, uh, yeah. Brad Henry Studio. Yeah, that uh, yeah. my band uh, Thieves recorded in. You oh, know, nice. A couple years back, and uh, we were able to use the you know, studio that you built, which by the way, cool. kudos. So cool. yeah, when you listen to that thief, when you listen to that thieves record, that, that was in the studio that you, you put together. So nice. Yeah, nice little tie in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's super cool. I mean I think we're all connected in some way anyways in this scene, you know. Yeah. It's just yeah. Such a yep. cool Which by the way, I, I need to bring up to Janarden that you need to probably get do some guest vocals on the the second Thieves record. I think that would be really cool if you came and did okay. maybe like a guest spot on one of the songs or something. Yeah. Uh, maybe a call and response thing with you and Janarden or something. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. 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 So Janarden, yeah. if you're listening, yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah. Sounds good right now. Idea, I guess, you know, we're going to have to circle around again and do like, do do one in another six months or a year after we've released the record. And we've got a little sure. more content, you know, to talk about. And uh, maybe we can even do a group episode with all four of us, you know? Yeah. That'd and, be cool. Yeah, have yeah. Jacob and Mike, you know, and do a little group chat. Yeah. Try not to talk over each other. That might be kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Your turn. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Are you done? Are you, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the Deep Ellum scene, it was, you know, you just felt like family. I mean, I bartended at Galaxy Club for a while. Um, I and I remember. That. Yeah. You, yeah. And yeah. I remember going down there uh, and just, I think I, I don't know, I must have worked at Tia's one. I don't know where, yeah, I probably worked at Tia's and rode my bike down there and just parked right in front and go in. And they're like, you're not working tonight. What are you doing? I'm like, Jesus Jones is playing, you know, like you know, <laughs> right here, right now. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, what? There's like 20 people there. I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> they're playing for me. <laughs> Yeah, I just remember stuff like that. Like, what are you doing here, you idiot? I'm like, this is right. awesome, man. This yeah. is, I'm alive. Like, this is like, it's just... no, yeah. I, I remember like being initially uh, kind of scared to go down there as when I was younger, you know, when I was right. really young, like 15, 16, 17. But then once I finally went down there, I got hooked on it. It was really addicting. It was, yeah. it, it really was. Like, I looked forward to going down there every weekend started going down there and seeing shows all the time. There was just something about it, how close all the clubs were together. Mm -hmm. There was a great scene there back then at that time. You could yeah. go down there on any weekend and see bands like freaking Drowning Pool and Slow Roosevelt, uh, you know, Do Sue. I mean, yeah, was, Jive, Edgewater. Uh, Edgewater. I yeah. mean, Fair to Midland. Ugly Mustard. <laughs> yeah, 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 Fair to Midland, yeah. Uh, Shiloh Death Squad. I mean, they're yeah. you know, on and on and on. Loaded Moses, you know, so many of them. Yeah. Yeah. I love just this amazing. Scene. I, re I really do. It's a great scene. Um, I'm yeah. surprised there wasn't more like compilation albums put out with all of us on it. You know? Yeah. Seems like there should have been. Yeah. Um, I guess someone had to foot the bill. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was always the <laughs> issue. Yeah. We, if we had the money, we definitely would have put that together. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, that, that scene, I want to try to document as much of it as I can, you know, go through and follow some old stories and just, you know, over time, try to build up, you know, as many, you know, as many documents of back then as I can. I got Chaz hopefully coming up. Remember Chaz from the local show? Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, we should, uh, we should, you got any, uh, any crazy local show stories or maybe anything about the Halloween gig or oh, anything man. at all from back then, you know, like, uh, 
I don't know. Anything at all that stands out? Uh, I don't know. I mean, some you, you want to keep in a small circle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I understand completely on that. Yeah. That's what editing is for. Yeah. We, we That's can, right. Yeah. 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 Snip, snip. yeah. yeah. No yeah. problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. But it was just such a good time. I mean, it, you know, yeah. overall, it was, you know, because I can see how it could be intimidating, you know, from the outside because, you know, you got the, you know, just the scene of just these people and energy and and the bouncers and, you know, but then once you get to know everybody, it was just, you know, everyone was just family and it was, it was super The bouncers cool. were all like the sweetest guys too, you know. Yeah, they're, all, yeah, they're always just the they're most like, gentle. Really big and intimidating looking, but then once you start talking to them, you're like, this guy's a big teddy bear. <laughs> right. Remember, uh, Anthony, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's like the sweetest guy ever. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, so. Jerry Rutherford? You remember Jerry? Yep. Uh, yeah. Did, yep. Was there any, well, well, real quick, before I trail too far off topic here, was there any uh, any other projects outside of anything that we mentioned that maybe never really got off the ground? Did you ever get together with any of the other guys and do any, like, kind of super group things where did you ever get together with Braxton or do anything like that or Rojo or any of those well, guys? Well, yeah, yeah, Rojo got together with him and Heath. Um, they weren't doing low gear at the time. And uh, I can't remember who was drumming. And we we wrote some stuff, but it didn't get out of the rehearsal room. Um, was he record something? Low gear was Heath in low gear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was in low gear at some point in time. Um, yeah. And and I recorded a song or two for a project that Braxton was doing. Um. And. Uh, I think they were looking for a singer. It was, uh, oh, I can't think of it now. But uh, he, w they went with the other guy. And then I did, one of my most nervous times in Deep Ellum, I tried out for Porn Lab as really? a vocalist. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, talk, they, talk practiced, yeah. they yeah. practiced at Curtain Club. Yeah. So, you know, uh, James wanted me to learn, you know, I don't know, three songs or something. I don't know what it was. And so, but I was doing Outlet and Waterhead at the time. Okay. And, uh, you know, so we were both doing really good, just strong and you're playing a lot. And so I went and, and tried out, super nervous, like cotton mouth, you know, and I was just like, this yeah. is Porn yeah. Lab. Like, I yeah. don't deserve yeah. to be on this stage. Um, and I remember, you know, we did the prong song, um, Snap Your Fingers, Snap Your Neck, and a couple oh, of their sure. originals. And, uh, Wow, and James, he, he was like, it was down to me and another guy, you know, but James yeah. is like, Hey, I don't want to put, I don't want to put outlet or waterhead. Like, you know, I don't want to put us in front of them. So, uh, you know, I think this do what I said. That was nice of him. That was really nice. Of him yeah. Yeah. So, so he decided to go the other route and, you know, I don't know, you know, what happened there, but but yeah. it was it was such an experience to yeah. first of all just yeah. rehearse at Curtain Club, you know, like this rehearsal space, and that was their jam yeah. room, right? Curtain Club yeah. was their jam room. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Our jam room was freaking Curtain Club. Yeah. That's so rad. Man. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, I just remember being so nervous. Just like, for the experience, gosh. it was worth it. Just for the experience, just to be able to go yeah. and you say that you yeah. played with those guys. You know? <laughs> right. um, Wow. Yeah. yeah. I remember every time watching them being just blown away the way they would sound. Oh. Remember yeah. James, his whole his whole setup? You always <laughs> because the mic would be like set way <laughs> down low, down towards the ground where it was only like three feet off the ground. Because he yeah. would punch like way down and do that little goblin man voice. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I don't know. If, I didn't remember that they covered Snap Your Fingers, Snap Your Neck, but I, I could picture it. I bet they rocked the hell out of that song. Yeah. And yeah and you I were singing it. you were singing yes. oh man I bet yeah. that was bad. <laughs> wow you mm -hmm. were actually a great fit for porn lab i see why he was considering you because you uh, definitely, you definitely had the presence man that might have that could have taken off right there i could have yeah. not really working wow. yeah that oof. i don't know if i even remember that from back then like did you tell us that you were trying out 
Yeah. I can't remember. I don't know the time frame. I mean, obviously, it was when everything was going on. So right. I probably yeah, did. I was probably pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. That's wild, though. Yeah. What an experience. That's cool. Yes. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so um, I don't know what we're at here. We're at like 53 minutes. We're almost at an hour. Um, I don't know. I feel pretty good about what we got so far. What about you? Yeah. I, I'd i like to mention Luke a little bit. I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need to round on some more stuff a little bit. Um, yeah. With, uh, uh, I think, maybe the end of Outlet a little bit, too, because he helped. Yes. He saved uh, Outlet at a certain point. Yeah. Yeah, um, he really did. We didn't go into my, I exited Outlet and went into Samsara. And then at a certain point, you guys also lost the drummer, Kyle. Yes. And, yes. you know, we're left, you know, holding the bag and just waiting to see what would happen. I know Luke stepped in and totally yep. saved the day on that. Yeah, we had a local show coming up, like, soon. I mean, it was within a week, you know, and, and uh, we, we lost all our equipment and our drummer. And so we had to borrow and beg and go buy our stuff out of pawn and then Luke, oh. you know, he's always around and he was always yeah. doing merch and stuff for us, you know, so he knew our songs verbatim. And uh but he wasn't playing regularly. So you know, we asked him, say, hey, can you can you fill in at least and then we can figure it out from there. So, you know, we practiced a, probably every night before the local show and then that was his first show was local show and you know we had our C D out already and it was like Wow. There you go. We, we just threw no wolves. Yeah. yeah. How did he do on that local show? Yeah. He did, he did really, really well. I mean, we played, um, I don't know how many shows he played. You know, that was kind of the rise and fall of Outlet. But I remember we went to Houston. I think he played Houston with us. I think he opened, man, I don't know, 30 Seconds to Mars he might have opened I can't that, remember. That you guys, oh, we, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because we we glossed right over that. You guys opened for 30 <laughs> seconds to Mars. Yeah. Pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. We we played with them in Dallas, and then we went and played with them in Houston. And uh, yeah, Jared Leto, he was kind of full of himself. So. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. he was he, he was a dick. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was just trying. You know, like, hey man, you know, I'm glad to play with you on Friday. Or, you know. Dallas night, and then we're playing with you tomorrow night. And he was just like, mm. <laughs> Great. Like, just yeah, walk. I'm, I'm going to be yeah. a joker one day. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But yeah. no, it was super fun. I mean, it was it was cool. But I think Luke played on that show with us. Yeah. But, well, that's crazy. Yeah. Though, that whenever he stepped into Outlet, so he hadn't been playing regularly. He was like coming at it from kind of a a cold start. You know, yes. like he hadn't been. You know, yep. the Outlet. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't just regular rock stuff. I mean, it was pretty <laughs> weird, you know. I mean, yeah. like, you know, so he was stepping into something there that was probably a little bit alien to him. You know, I mean, not really his normal style. But not to say yes. he could handle it. I know he could yeah. handle it, but I'm sure at first he was like, whoa. You know. Oh, yeah. I mean, right yeah, now. you listen to that outlet. You know, Kyle was just a badass on the drums. I mean, just the little stuff he'd throw in. Yeah, the so, fill, everything very creative, but... Uh, Luke had a real primal quality about him. Um, Luke yes. reminds me a lot of, uh, I always, for some reason, uh, Abe Cunningham from Deftones. Yeah. I always thought that there was a really big similarity between Luke and Abe. Like, because Abe is really solid, really in the pocket, but there's something also really primal about it, but it, it just works. You know, it's also a helmet, too. Luke had a real yeah. helmet vibe, you know. Yeah. Uh, he liked breaking sticks, liked breaking heads and symbols oh, you yeah. just break stuff. I remember that, yes because i remember when i first uh came and jammed with you guys in Marietown. <laughs> one of my vivid memories was walking over and seeing how bent his uh drum heads were i remember looking and going dude what did you do to this thing you know what what are you doing to your drum kit you know beat but, yeah God, so we work. had a symbol yeah. and a stick graveyard out front, like just symbols just thrown in the yard, and sticks just broken. Yeah. Like, dude. Yeah. Did, uh, did he ever do anything, like go on and do anything without you? You know, the way that you did, you went and did any, you know, an outside project w without him. Did he ever go and try anything with no. you know, or anything? No. We always joked about uh, through, through even our bass player times, 
And then, you know, I made that local H guitar where I would plug through an amp, a bass amp and a guitar amp. So we were going to be a two piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and I had foot pedals. I made them, I made everything. I made the guitar pickups and everything. And, and so we would jam just two piece. And what we wanted to do, because we would just, we wouldn't even have to write. We would just jam. Like we hit, we wouldn't see each other for two months, you know, practice. And then we'd come in and just hit it like tight. Cause you know, we were playing forever. And so yeah. what we wanted to do was we wanted to put some clocks on the wall, like, okay, you got a 30 minute set, you know, and just count down and just nonstop, just music in people's faces, whether it was vocals or just instrumental, just drums, noise, everything. And then at the very end, just have shit, just boop, and then we're off stage, <laughs> but we never got to it. You never, you, you never got to do that. Man, no, not, not on stage. Yeah. We did plenty of practices, but <laughs> that would have been. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. You guys definitely had that, whatever it was. Yeah. You had the Diamond Benny thing or the Alex and Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just, we were kind of, we were synced up. Yeah. It comes from years of playing together. You know, yeah. like me and Kyle and Eric also had that. Um, yeah. We had played together for so many years. You know, you just, you get to where you know what the other one's going to do before they do it, you know? Yeah, That's yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> and if but, they don't do it, they're like, you messed up. <laughs> I was I was actually really disappointed that whenever Nathan came through with all the uh, videos for Outlet, that there was no video documentation of Luke, Gosh. you know, coming in and saving the day there at the end because, you know, he really deserves some credit there for what he, he saved the band, you know? And yeah. And and they, it, it, you know, originally one of you know, at least partly my brainchild so i really appreciate him at least trying to save it because i totally abandoned it and i totally feel bad. <laughs> i feel bad for that now i really do i have some real regret that i still live with for that and uh yeah. you know i i'm eternally grateful for him of making that effort to you know thank you luke keep yeah. it going yeah Be real absolutely yeah 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 Love you, brother. So, yeah you know, okay. yeah. I mean, That's why I did that opening video. You know, I went ahead. I was like, yeah. Let's dedicate that to him. You know, 100%. yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, and we need to. He'll. He's going to be in the liner notes of the Burn the Negative record, like without a doubt. He's gonna <laughs> yeah. somewhere. You know, I mean, we might even put a pick of him somewhere hidden somewhere in, the, in one of the pages or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Got to put him yeah. in somewhere. Um, but that's crazy though that he never. Um, I find that interesting. I mean, it's a little pointing it but it's also interesting that he never went outside of the Mary child thing or you know it was like that was it for him yeah. you know it was yeah. kind of if i wasn't playing yeah with him then he was like i don't i don't have to pursue it you know so that's crazy yeah yeah we never played <laughs> with anybody else yeah no. really interesting i never knew that i always assumed that maybe maybe he might have had some other bands down the road or something yeah 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 nothing wow do you still and have? Yeah, we probably have. Uh, oh, I don't know. You know, we used to have a four track, and you know, Luke and I would record. Yeah. You know, Mary Child and all that. Just we would just record almost every practice, and so I probably have, you know, five hundred hours of tapes. You know, just like little formats. <laughs> Since we're on Mary Child, real quick, did you want to? Uh, how did you guys get on that? What was it called? Sounds of the Underground. Yeah, Sounds Popeye. of the Underground. Yeah. There was yeah. a compilation CD, and I'm guessing up in Colorado, something that happened. Well, they were actually out of, I don't know how I got on it, but they were actually out of California. So oh. it was probably some mail-in thing out of, you know, some magazine. And yeah. and they picked us, and we were on one of, I don't know, 18 bands or some unsigned bands. You know, they would pick unsigned bands to sell it to try to, you know, be our, you know, make money off of them. But right. Uh, Nothing ever came of it, but but we did get a taste of a real studio. Uh, it was Dennis Weaver. He was an old actor, and his son, I don't remember his name, recorded us, mm -hmm. and we played it. He had a, a club, and uh, we played there a few times, and it was it was pretty neat. That was that was really our first time at a a true studio. You know, it was super nice, and and uh, you know we yeah we recorded. She said a song called She Said. Yeah, and it's like green hat, real poppy. You know, it was just yeah, real punchy poppy. Yeah, it was fun. It was. Do you uh, yeah. do you still have that CD? Because we should upload that onto YouTube. 
So it's no. Okay. Out. Everybody get a good laugh out of it. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, I think just for historical purposes, you know, it's cool to document it all. Yeah. You know, and Luke is playing on it. So yeah, for sure. Okay. Cool. I should have it. Yeah, I'll look. Yeah. 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 yeah that was... way we can at least have something, you know, with him on it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, any, I'd like to hear those four track tapes too of y'all's experiments. Gosh. <laughs> Some raw stuff. Yeah. It was it was so exciting for me, dude. Like, you know, being a, I was like 16 at the time. And, yeah. you know, coming out there, you know, and you lived in the, I remember driving out there and you lived way out in Poetry. And <laughs> I lived kind of like right on the outskirts of Dallas, but going out to your house, it got dark. And, you know, going down that long, winding country road. And then <laughs> I, came up, and I remember pulling up the first time going like, is this his place? Because you lived in your house, your, the buildings were round. It was like <laughs> three little hut houses. We yep. got to talk about that house too. We should mention it. <laughs> But I remember that the one on the far left, like the hut on the far left was the jam room. Yep. Yeah. Y'all had like a standalone like building, you know, that we could jam in. And uh, I just thought it was so cool because, uh, you know, it was like I just stepped right into something that was already rolling. And you guys, yep. you know, you guys had that. But, yeah, that house was crazy. I remember uh, the way the walls were rounded, you know. No, it, was, it was some of the rooms. It was a neat like, place. Very, very yeah. neat. Yeah like a hut almost <laughs> yeah that was that was the place where i got you i remember i would come over we jam a little bit and then afterwards we go in the living room and you sit there and just play cd after cd you showed me like the first seven dust record uh the yeah first, uh, the first ultra spank record uh, mm -hmm. Spot, uh <laughs> down you know just like what an era that was too yeah. I, remember, I remember you showed me all those records like one after another Puya, like all those bands. yeah yeah uh, yeah, we, would, we we had a lot of good times out there. Yeah, you actually yeah. don't far from there now, right? You're still kind of yeah. in that area, Fate and Poetry. Yeah, it's not too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Luke uh, Luke definitely saved the day, and he, he definitely needed some cred for that for sure, man. Mad yeah. respect, you know, for stepping into those shoes. That it's always hard to step into some something that already has like an established character. Everybody, yes. outlet, everybody in Outlet had a real defined role. You know, like mm -hmm. you said, I, Kyle had a lot of really creative fills and pieces. You know, so yeah, it's 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 not it's not easy to step into that. You know, it'd be like trying to find somebody to replace Eric. You know, it w wouldn't have been yeah. easy. You know, yeah, he's such a unique, yeah, such a unique <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, man, I think uh, when like I said, whenever Burn the Negative gets our because I'm going to say when, not if, when we get yeah. our first release out. Uh, we'll circle back around and do like a, you know, another in-depth thing on the record and talk about our experience recording it and all that. So yeah, cool. Still at the beginning phase, recording it with Braxton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but the point is though is that we came full circle. You know, at the end of the story, yeah. we 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 ended yeah. up getting back, getting the band back together. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. I guess I'd like to mention Zero Days Wasted. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Talk so about I, it a little bit. I sobered up five years ago um, and haven't touched a drop of alcohol in over five years now. June 5th was my sober date. So, Dude, yeah, man. That is right. And, uh, so through that journey, I, you know, luckily I was sober before Luke passed away because I don't, I, I probably wouldn't have made it through if I would have been drinking still. Oh, um, so, yeah. So I was like, you know, how can I, you know, I want to create something to, to help people or to, you know, to push this out in the world. And so I just came up with zero days wasted. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a platform to start with merch and stuff, but I'm, I'm really, you know, waiting and always looking to get the right people involved and, and see where, you know, cause I would definitely need some help to push it. But, yeah. um, you know, I, th I think there's a lot there. You know, first of all, it's around sobriety. That's its main focus. But then from there, it's zero days wasted. Get off your ass <laughs> and enjoy life. You know, yes. you yeah. might not be here tomorrow. You yeah. know, it's not guaranteed. You're here right now. Quit bitching and whining about what you don't have or what you want to do or what the other people talk about. Just go enjoy your life. Yep. And so that's, that's, it's just kind of encapsulates all of that. So, you know, 
I think I jumped on that energy with Burn the Negative. I really did. I felt that energy of zero days waste, and it was like, let's do yeah. this. And let's yeah. wait. Let's do this now. And right. I don't want to hold off. I want to do this now. Yeah. 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 I feel so. the same way. I, I felt that when you said zero days wasted, I was like, that's perfect. So the perfect yeah. name for it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. It has so much meaning, you know, and people can take different meanings from it and, and hey, make it yours. Yeah. But but just don't waste the day because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So let's enjoy it. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that's so well. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Amen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, oh, speaking of Sunday, right? We're going to get together Sunday, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, we better. <laughs> we better. You know, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's probably wondering when that, that first recording is going to come out. I know they're ready. Yeah. To we got, we got a lot well, of curious people. Yeah. Yeah. Until then, we'll try to keep popping out some uh, 3D picks or whatever those are. Those. <laughs> hey, man, that uh, that little that little camera that you got. What is it called again? The uh, Insta 360. The Insta 360, man. Yeah. Some of those pics are hilarious. The way <laughs> the faces and everything. It's like a little funhouse mirror. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, this it's, is it's good. Crazy. Yeah. Well, brother, I will uh, see you on Sunday and everybody else. We hope you enjoyed our little journey through uh, through some music history here. I hope you have yes. a good time, man. We really, I really enjoyed having you. So, uh, dude, yeah, I, it's so awesome that you're doing this and put this together. I mean, thank you. you know, thank I you. listen to the other episodes and it's so cool. You know, you get bits and pieces of, you know, just memories, you know, and I had to pause some of them because, you know, and, and go off on my own little journeys. Oh, wow. it would click a memory you know so yeah it's super cool That's um, great. so I, I can't wait to see where this goes for you and um if you never if you ever need anything just let me know i mean i'm here to support whatever i can do so absolutely man yeah the best way you can help support is obviously uh to interact with any of the posts and share it for me you know spread the word yep. and uh yeah. i'll also i don't do facebook you. much but i'll do what i can yeah. <laughs> i know i know <laughs> I, I, it's a necessary evil it is for I, yeah. well, I know yeah. yeah i know absolutely all right brother well thank you so much for doing this man yeah I yeah really dude g-rod man i love you man you too i love you too brother i'll see you soon